right. Got about a minute, people. Got about a minute. This train is pulling out the track, pulling out of the yard, whether you hear or not. So if you hear something, grab yourself, grab um, a friend or loved one. Let them know. Let them know. Let them know. Give me 40, 45 minutes of your time. I promise you we'll learn something about the Word of God tonight and we'll see how it applies to our life. That's the whole purpose. We're going to be in the book of Acts, Acts the 24th chapter, and we are rolling forward with that, saints. So if you would, grab your Bibles, grab your pads, grab your phones, whatever device you're going to use to look at the Word of God with me, to go through the Word of God with me. Don't just trust me. Go through it with me. To make sure that these things are so that I'm saying. Okay, we got about less than a minute, less than a minute, and we are pulling out the tracks. I pray, guys, you have had a blessed week, a blessed week thus far, and definitely a blessed day. So I want you to let it all go for a moment. Just let your brain relax. Please, don't make God compete against anything. Would you not do that for me, please? Turn off these um, TV or whatever it is, the device that may distract you, please. So what we're going to do, let's go before the throne of grace in prayer, if you will. Father, we honor you. We bless you and we thank you for this opportunity you have given us once again to come before the throne of grace. Let me say, Lord, I am honored that you would give me, Lord, you would give me this opportunity to be able to just sit down, Lord God, and look over the word of God with people of God that desire to know more about you, Father. I pray that you do not disappoint the people at all. Help them that they do not look at me, for it's nothing that I can give. But help them, Lord, that they may just hear the voice, your voice, that you choose to use through me, Lord, to be able to speak to thy people. And we are all sitting in great anticipation to hear what it is that you have for us today, that we may be able to hold on to that which you lay before us, that we may be able to apply it to our lives to see the benefit thereof. Oh, Father, I pray that you bless the saints, that they have their mind right here in the now, that we not worry about what we're going to do after after Bible study or, or what has taken place throughout the day, we can't change it if it already has, already has happened. And, and Lord, we can't change what's going to be. So Lord, we ask you, Father, we ask you for your assistance and your help that we may keep our minds and our hearts steadfast on you. For your word states that if we keep our mind on you, you will keep us in perfect peace. So I pray that you bless the saints that they have the mind, Lord, to serve you, to hear from you, to know your will for their lives right now, Lord. So I pray that you remove any distractions that they may be facing that may keep them from hearing what is it that you want to say to them, for them, about them. Lord, help us all, Lord God, to sit and hold fast to your word that we may know without a shadow of a doubt that your word is nourishment and nutrients, Lord God, for our spiritual man, that the spiritual man may be able to Eat and feed on that, Lord, which we're about to receive, that we may strengthen ourselves and grow. So to the saints that are here right now, help them to stay in the moment. To the saints, Lord God, that will be joining us shortly, I plead the blood of Jesus that they'll get to a safe place, Lord, that they may remove all distractions, that they may sit in on the word of God and find out what it is that you have to say to them, for them, about them. And Lord, to those that will not be joining us tonight for whatever reason, I plead the blood of Jesus and ask for your mercy. Mercy, Lord God, that you may bless them that at a later date they may view this message. For surely you have something to say to them also. So right now, by my own free will, I right now turn this message over to the Holy Spirit. I give him the power of attorney over that which we're going to get ready to study into. That he may go any route he choose to go. Help me, Lord, just to keep up. But help me to stay focused that I may not be a distraction to thy people. So with that said, Lord God, I stand on the authority of your word, binding in the demonic spirit that raises up with the purpose, Lord God, of bringing confusion, Lord God, or in any way, form, or fashion, trying to take the people of God's mind off your word. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. Now, I believe by faith that you have already honored this request. For this is a prayer that we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father, for it is both in your name and under your blood. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as we're doing, saints, we're into the book of Acts, Acts the 24th chapter. We are moving through Acts the 24th chapter, and we had just finished studying, guys. We ended up, um, last week, we got down to verse, I think it was verse number 15. So what we're going to do is our ever-popular um, slingshot effect. Let's go back. Let's read, um, catch up a little on what we studied last week. Let's move forward to new stuff this week, if you will.
So in Acts, and we started, it was eight from um, verse eight to verse um, 15. So his account, um, <clears throat> remember what took place in, in chapter eight, it says, commanding his accusers to come unto thee by examining, by examining of whom thyself may take knowledge of all these things whereof we accuse him. And so what they was upset was, remember they brought Paul before, uh, where they were trying to kill Paul, but the chief captain grabbed, protect Paul, and sent him to Felix. And so what they did is they had to go, he said, well, if you want to make a case for it, you need to go, um, go to Felix and sit down um, for this case. In verse number nine, it says, and the Jews also ascended, saying that these things were so, meaning everything that um, a, a spokesperson, a spokesperson, if you would, um, had already spoken. What was the guy's name? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, Tetelus. Yeah, Tetelus. So what he did is he was the spokesperson for all of the leaders, the Christian leaders. And I don't understand. These are leaders. Y'all speak every day or Sunday or Sabbath or whenever y'all speak. Why weren't you capable of standing up there speaking for yourself on the behalf? But you had to go get a spokesperson. Um, I guess they say, well, you know, if you're going to go into court, get a court setting. But nevertheless, truth is truth, regardless of who tells it. And so all the Jews put their agreement on that. It says, then Paul, after the governor had a beckon with him to speak, answered, for as much as I know, know that thou has been of many years a, a judge unto this nation. I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because that thou may have understand that there are yet but 12, there are yet but 12 days since I, went up unto Jerusalem for to worship. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues, nor in the city. Neither can they prove these things whereof they now accuse me of. But I, but this, I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all these things which which are written in the laws and in the prophets and have hope towards God, which they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. So Paul is saying as he's making his approach to Felix, because after Felix heard their eloquent speaker that began to uh, make his case against Paul as to why um, they don't understand why is it that um, the chief captain would stop them from, from implementing their, their punishment according to their rules, but he saw what was taking place and the information he had. Remember, Paul had dual citizenship, so what the chief captain was watching was a Roman um, offended to be killed. And so that, that's a no-no. Again, when you are into a foreign nation, um, foreign nations are very, very reluctant to see, um, if you will, People from other nations hurt, especially if they are from powerful nations. And so that's what um, the chief captain was beginning to tell him. No, 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 no. Y'all not going to kill this man. He's a Roman. And so he took him, sent them to Felix, let them speak to him. And they sent their man to saying, well, we was going to do this. Uh, you guys broke in, broke in and stopped our rituals, if you would, or, or how we handle our business. And all of the people there said, yeah, I agree. That was so. A bunch of liars collecting together. But he was saying, Paul was beginning to point to him saying, I did nothing wrong. He said, you found me. And in verse number 12, he says, neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up, uh, raising up against, raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the cities. So he says, I wasn't causing havoc anyway. So what are y'all upset about? What are y'all mad about? Now, these guys had to be big mad because, remember, the chief captain stopped them and sent Paul. And it was some days before they were able to get there to make their case. And so even after that, they're upset and mad even days later. See, here's the problem you're going to run into with people. Uh, the, the word of God is what the devil was after, what he was angry about. And we're going to find out later on that as you go to the word of God and stay with the word of God, that's what the devil is frustrated about. That's what he hates about you. So don't get into your own words. Just stay with what Jesus said. Remember in Matthew, the fourth chapter, I think it's the fourth chapter of Matthew. When Jesus was being tempted of the devil and as the devil was coming at him, Jesus just kept saying one thing. He stayed consistent. As a matter of fact, um, as a matter of fact, let's go there, if you would. Matthew, go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. 
Because what we want to, I'm going to show you the best line of defense you as a believer and me as a believer have that we ought to stand with when it comes to doing the things of God. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Okay, it says, um, okay, in Matthew, the fourth chapter, verse number one. Listen at the account here, guys. Then was Jesus led of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. God was with him. God will be with you when you're going through temptation. Matter of fact, God will either lead you um, to face the temptation. Why? Because God has one purpose. That's to grow you. That's to grow you. He knows what you can handle. He knows what you can deal with. He knows what you're able to bear. But he says, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards and hungry. And when the tempter came unto him, he said, if I be the, if I be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now, a point that I'm making is the devil is always going to go after the thing that you need. Jesus had already been fasting. So one thing the devil want to do is go after food. Now, there's nothing wrong with food after you have fast. But God is want you, God wants you to know that you should love him more than you love the food. And see, there's nothing wrong with that. But what the devil wanted him to do is misuse the authority which God had given him. But this is the point I want to make um, to him. Verse number four, he says, but he answered and said unto him. He answered and said, he said, but he answered and said. Now, Jesus said unto the devil, after the devil told him, well, you have, a, you have authority, you have the power. Won't you make these stones be made bread? And listen to what Jesus says. It is written. It is written. And again, you will find out. Then uh, the devil took him up into a holy city and said, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said, If thou be the son of God, command, um, cast thyself down, for it is written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest not dash thy foot against the stone. That's the devil speaking. He has a lot to say. But listen at Jesus. And Jesus said unto him, It is written. Again, uh, the devil said unto him, um, and again, again, the devil took him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said, if I would fall, if I, he said, and said unto him, all these things will I give thee if I would fall down and worship me. And Jesus said unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. So guys, the point that I'm making, the point I went that route is to let you know, you stay with the word of God. So what does God's word say about the circumstance and situation which you are going through? If someone has made you mad and got you riled up and you're willing to say something, what did God say? He says, be quick to hear, slow to speak. If someone has tried to do you wrong and, and well, tried their best to do you wrong and get at you and you want to get back at them, what did God say? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So we need to know what God's word is about a circumstance or situation. And so we can stand on God's word because God is only obligated to perform his word. God is not obligated to get us out of a mess that we have gotten ourselves into. We need to start saying it is written. And that's what Paul was saying right there. They didn't find me upset, arguing with nobody, causing trouble. He says, uh, uh, neither, can, uh, neither can they prove any of these things that they're saying. So what it is, is hold your peace. God will fight your battle. God, Paul ain't got to fight with them. They can't prove nothing that they're saying. These are just accusations. Why? And just because, again, they carry the title as these leaders, you don't have to stand to um, leaders. I mean, they're right. Because they put their name on a lie. Remember, they said in verse number um, nine, and the Jews are sent saying, these are so. So they said, we agree with them. And who was the Jews that said it? That was the, um, the leaders, Annas, um, Ananias, and all of the chief priests that had someone to speak for them to tell all these lies, and they said, we're in agreement with it. So you might as well have told the lie. And that's what we were studying then. And then he says, but Paul said, well, here's the issue that they're going to get to. He said, but this, he said, but this I confess unto thee, verse number 14, but this I confess unto thee, that after the way which... That which they call heresy, so worship I, the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. What is written? Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. And that's what we need to be saying. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and then also to the Greek, meaning God's order. And so what he is saying, that's what he's saying. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, because people are going to say what you believe is stupid. 
Because people are going to say what you believe is wrong. You have a backwards thinking. This is a new day in time. Things change. They're going to tell you all that to try to make you change what God has said. That's what the devil is doing. But would you have to stand firm and say, it is written. Let God be true and every man be a liar. I'm going to stay with what God said because the safest place to be is in the will of God. And God's will is his word. And that's what you will find they would try to do. Try to embarrass the word of God out of you. This world is going on and it's only going to get worse. They're going to try to make you succumb to their thinking. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That is to say the world should not be pulling the saints. The saints should be pulling the world. God is not waiting on the world to do nothing but one thing and one thing only. Repent. That's all God is asking for the world to do. To repent. But for us as the believers, he is asking us to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Now, how do you let your light shine? Well, what is the light? The word is the light. So how do you let your light shine? By speaking the word. God, what do you say about it? By acting on the word. Lord, what do you expect out of me? And so you stand by God's word and every single time you're going to come out okay. So he's saying this was written in the, this is the word. That's why it says, um, latter part of 14, believe all these things which are written in the law and in the prophets. So he said written in the law and in the prophets. So what he's saying is it's just the word that's written and it's the word that is spoken. The law is the word that is written. The prophets is the word that is spoken. So what you do is you stand firm on what God has said. You just keep saying what God say, say, and doing what God say, doing. Last one in verse number 14, it says, it says, and, and have hope towards God, which they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. Paul is saying, see, I have not done anything wrong. I'm standing on the word of the law and the prophets, and they themselves agree with me to this. That's why he says, also I have hope towards God, which they themselves also allow. Meaning they have to agree with what I'm saying or they finna deny the Torah. They finna deny the law and they will not do that. So now they spokesperson and all of them are sitting there stunned because Paul know the word. Listen, saints, let me bring this to home today. You did not know how to work your telephone when you first got it. You didn't know all the whistles and bells and all this. And when they started all of the texting, and you didn't know how to do that. You didn't know all about this. Now the kids, not only they are gone from texting, they swiping now. Now the thing just, uh, the, the thing almost just, what you think, I got it. Just look at me. I'm gonna tell, I know what you're thinking. And start writing stuff down. Meaning the more you use a thing, the better you become at a thing. Quit using excuses when it comes to the word of God. You need to get in the word of God for yourself. Give God the same respect you give TikTok. Give God the same respect you give YouTube. Give God the same respect to whatever social media app you use. Give God the same respect. Give him some time that you sit down and learn about it. How many hours do you scroll through stupidity? Wasting God brain cells looking at a, a squirrel riding a bike. Really? Really saints? So what God is saying is if you got the time to watch a squirrel ride a bike, you don't have no time to feed your spiritual man and you're wondering why you're in a state of spiritual, spiritual anemic. You're just, you're weak. You're weak inside because you will not feed the spirit of God that's in you. And it's so sad. It's so sad. Even at times when a buffet is fixed and served to you, some still will not eat it. And it's a sad situation. That is to say, the word of God is prepared Sundays, Wednesdays, other days by men of God and women of God. And they're bringing the word of God to people. And I ain't got time for that. Let me scroll by because I, I, I heard the squirrel the squirrel pop the willy on the bike. I know he was riding last week, but this time he popped the willy. So let me go look at that. That ain't going to help you at all in your spiritual walk. And when the devil try to attack you, a squirrel riding a bike. Really? You need to get up on things, people. The squirrel's now skiing. Now, now we have, according to the word of God, as we move forward, listen to verse number 16. It says, and here, he says, and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards man. So Paul's what he, Paul is saying, I can stand here flat-footed, ten toes down, and say, I stand here innocent before God and man. 
I'm going to stand here and I'm going to let you hear from me. I'm standing here to my accusers and saying to them right here in front of everybody, you are a flat foot liar. I did not do that. I did not say that. And when you have your accusers standing in front of you and you call them out like that and everybody is looking, see, it's something about a person when they speak in truth. The confidence that they speak with. The boldness that they speak with. And you know the ones that's telling the lie. Because when, when truths come out, they don't know how to take it. You see them fumbling all over stuff. You see them trying to, you know. But when you're speaking truth, you're staying firm. Look at a person. It's a thing called body language. It says everything you need to know. They have experts in body language. They have experts in reading your eyes when you're saying the thing. And it's very, very, you got to be a special kind of liar to get around these people or to get around this when they're doing it. That's why now when they have, um, they're interviewing somebody and things, they have cameras on your eyes, they have cameras on things that you do. When they're interrogating people, they're watching all these things because that tells you a lot with the body language. And so that's what Paul is saying. He's standing here, he's standing boldly and his body language speaks loud and clear. This man is telling the truth. That's why the chief captain grabbed him and sent him down to the Felix. And Felix is sitting there looking at this because Felix gave him a chance. Okay, I heard them. Now you speak. Now Felix is watching him in the way he's conducting himself. And Felix is quickly coming to the conclusion, this man is telling the truth. This man is telling the truth. So those are the things you will find. So that's what Paul is saying here. And here is, herein do I exercise myself. To have always a conscience void of offense towards God and man. If your aim is to please God, you will cover man. But if your aim is to please man, you will offend God. Because man is always going to be contrary to God. But when you do what thus says the Lord, the only person that's going to be offended is the ones that don't want right. So stand firm, saints. Don't you back down. Don't you back up. Don't give in. Don't give out. You don't have to be offensive. But you can stand firm on your word because the very ones that hate you because of you standing on truth and being a person of principle and a person of your word will be the very person that will use you as a reference. No, Robert said, and you have to be careful. Don't let no one use your name in vain. That is to say someone use you for a reference, a name drop you for you to carry their sin or their mess. No, no, no. Don't do that. See, I recall there was a co-worker that I had, and he was a, well, he was an interesting fellow. Um, very loose. Very, very loose. And so anytime he got in a mess, whatever, they knew he was lying to something. But when he was telling the truth about something, he would say, I'm not lying. Ask Robert. Well, why are you asking me? Why am I brought into this? Because he knew if I said that's not true. They knew, the people knew that if I said, uh, he did not do that. It carried a lot of weight because of the character of the person that I was before them. Well, your character should be able to speak that your, uh, should be so that when you speak, it carries weight that people will look at you and say, well, you know what? Uh, this person and character, even if you mean well and has done and said the wrong thing or misspoken, you go back and straighten it out. I was in the room. Another thing I recall that was on my job, um, um, a dearly beloved um, brother of ours. He has since, since then gone to be with the Lord. He was in a supervisor's position and something had taken place and I had, I had told him um, told him something, but what he did is he went in on this other guy and I mean he really went in on this other guy and the guy was like, no, no I, I did not do that. I didn't say that. And he was really going at the guy and he, uh, he asked me and I said, no, 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 you misheard me. That's not what I said. Well, that's not what I was trying to convey. See, even though that was a supervisor and I'm looking at him really going in, I could have just kept my mouth shut and it would have just been his word against the supervisor word, but God is always watching. He said, no, no, that's not it. And so that he had to apologize, but he was man enough to do that, to apologize. Even when you know when you apologize, the person that you apologize to is going to run off at the mouth and go at you. Your job is make sure you have your character. 
That's what really matters. And so that's what Paul is saying here. He says in verse number 17, he says, Now after many years, I came to, I came to bring arms, and, arms to my nation and offerings. So what Paul is saying is, I'm laying this, um, this whole scenario down. From after many years, many years, remember they're in Jerusalem. And Paul is saying, after many, many years, I just wanted to come home. And I wanted to bring arms, arms to my nation. Arms meaning money, and he says, and offerings. What is he offering? I want to help my nation. What do you have to offer for your nation? Look, sometimes God has already spoken to money. Firm Foundation is never a church that hops and beat on money. That's not what we do. God has already spoken to that. That's between you and God. I'm, I'm not going to babysit that situation. You are mature enough in the word to know that. But God said your offerings. What is your offerings? Everybody always say that's money. That's not just your money. That's your talent. That's your gift. So you offer that unto God. See, it's easy to put a few dollars in the plate and you sit back and do nothing. But God would rather have your gift and your talent because God blessed you with that. You can do this, God says. I need this in my house. Why do you think I put you there? So Paul said, I came back to assist the house of God in any way I can. And he wanted to give the people God, meaning um, God's people. He wanted to give them the truth of God's word. You guys are misinterpreting this. You have missed it. And he wanted to tell them about this. And that's what the devil is really upset about. The devil is really mad about Paul speaking the truth of God's word. That's what his anger is. He's offering. He's bringing his offering to them. So it's not just about alms. That's the money. But you're offering. What else you have to offer to God? Okay, it's good that you're able to send some money, but God would rather see you in the house of God. Forget not the assembling of yourselves with the saints. And what you have for the Lord, you offer it wholeheartedly unto him. You sing, well, sing for the Lord. You know, when I was growing up, there was a song we used to sing in church. It says, whatever you do for the Lord, let it be real. When you sing for the Lord, let it be real. Whatever you do, just let it be real. Let it be real. And that's what we say, guys. And that's what we have in the body of Christ today. What have God given you? Use it to his glory. Are you real about what God has given you? You may not be the best singer, but you sure can usher. You may can't usher real good, but you sure can sweep the floor. You sure can do something for the house of God. And God is saying, use that gift which I have given you as an offering. God wants you to do it. And so he says, whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult. So what he's saying is, you can see what y'all saying is a lie because I've, he already established that I've been here 12 days. I've been here 12 days and it ain't been no uproar in the city yet. Because if it was what they were saying, that would have been an uproar. And so what he's saying is, upon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple. So there are some people that's always going to know you. They, they see you. You may not know them, but they know you. And so what Paul is saying is I'm purified, meaning I went through the rituals to say I can't come in the temple. What they were saying with Paul is you can't be in the temple. Matter of fact, you, you, what they were saying earlier was he, he disgraced, he, he disgraced the temple. He not purified. He, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? He, um, well, what he did pretty much with the temple is he, what is that word? When you take and desecrate something. So what he did is they saying you profane the temple and they was trying to kick him out. And he said, I'm purified. I, everything that there was needed for me to go through the temple. I, I, I was able to fulfill that. He said in the temple, neither, um, with multitude nor with turmoil. So I wasn't trying to do anything causing anybody any problems. I was not trying to stir up a, I mean, I wasn't trying to um, seduce a crowd and I was not trying to stir up the people causing havoc. See, I don't care what lie a person tell on you, just keep living, keep doing right. So the people are smart. They will begin to watch this thing and say, you know what? Ah, that person ain't nothing like what you're saying. That person is nothing like what you are saying. I have watched this person. Now, let me tell you something. Just like they were in verse number nine. Saints, be careful. Look again at verse number nine. And the Jews also assented, saying these things were so. What are you saying, preacher? I am saying to you, be careful who you lend your name to. Reputations precede people. Everybody ain't lying all the time. 
If you keep hearing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again about a person, there may be some truth to that. Everybody is not lying. Especially people don't know each other, never seen each other, never met each other, and they say the same thing about you that that person said. Somewhere you have to look at this thing. So be careful who you put your name to. I thank God for a firm foundation, and I stand up right before God and the saints that you would not be ashamed in speaking the name of Pastor Minor. You're not going to hear the name of Pastor Minor out there in the street in some craziness that you find yourself have to defend me. No, 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 no. If you defend me, you'll be defending me with the confidence of knowing that is not true. That is not true. And if you come to find out it is true, you will be the most shocked person in the world if you hear some craziness and it's true. Why? Because you know that's not my character. That's not me. So be careful what you put your name to. Be careful what you put your name to. So he's saying, you didn't see me there doing these things. Who ought to, he's saying, if so, who ought to have been here before thee and object if they had all against me. So what he's saying is, you had these Jews from Asia that was there. If there was a problem, y'all ought to have them here as your witness. Who is your character witness? Who is your character witness? I want to ask you that question. Who is your character witness? Who is it that would stand up for you when someone says something? They would say, well, no, that's, that, that don't fit that person. No, nah, I know that person. Who is your character witness? And I'm talking about the people that would stand on you with character. Any liar can get a group of liars to lie with them and for them. But I'm talking about people of character. See, you got to have a character witness. And the way you have a character witness is you have to have character. And so that's what Paul is saying right here. Okay, y'all seen me. I'm in the temple. I'm purified, meaning I went through the rituals to get there. So you cannot say I'm not the Jew that you're saying. I was able to fit all of the criteria. And there were Jews that saw me in the temple. And they didn't see me causing a problem or trying to um, uh, bring division. The they didn't see that. So if they did, my question is in verse number 19, Paul says, well, why don't y'all have them here? Y'all are right here in the city. You've been here in the city before y'all had y'all saved with, um, with Felix. So surely you could have brought witnesses. But all of the witnesses that said that was so in verse number nine, they came with you. They came with you. But what about the people in the city that you were in? Now, it would have been another thing if they would have got there and, and there was the same problems there before they got there. Then you only have to say, well, wait a minute. If the same problem that was back then is here, what is the common denominator? You, you're the common denominator. So they say, Paul, they had the same problem. It, it's you. Because these people come in to complain about this, and we're here, and you have the same problem going on, but that's not so. So that's what Paul was saying in verse number 19. It ought to be in so. You ought to use these people as a witness. But there's no witness because it's not true. And that's what Paul was saying. The things that you're saying could not be verified. You can't prove nothing that you're saying. So it is speculation. When someone do not have proof against you, their job is to muddy the water, to throw a lot of things in the air, or try to assassinate your character, to try to get people's mind turned off the fact of the matter and turn it into other things. But if you have truth, you ain't got to go off on tangents. You stay right on what it is. And when the person go off and go to all these places, you bring them right back to the question. And so that's what Paul was saying. In verse 20, he said, or else let them say, let them say, let them, let them, he said, or else let these same here say, me, he say, if they have found any evil done in me while I stand before the council. So what he's saying is, okay, if any of you that's right here right now have any evil you can find in me, we're right before the council. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Now, that's the person that's dropping. They drawing a line right there in front of your leaders and in front of the um, Felix. What he's saying, if there's any right here that can bring some, uh, bring some evidence to these accusations, right now is the time to speak it. Put up or shut up is what Paul is saying. Let me see you. Come on with it. And see, that's how you know when a person is got, they, they speaking the truth. They'll say, come on. Let me hear it. No, no, I'm, go ahead and speak. Feel free. I'm going to just sit here and be quiet and let you speak. Because one thing about truth, like I said, you don't have to try to fix the truth. You just say it. It is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. 
And so that's what Paul is telling you right there. He says, or else let these same here say, if they have found any evil doing in me while I stand before the council. Here's my question. When people are standing there before you and you put them on the spot, watch the anger that's in their eyes. Watch the frustration when everybody turns to them and say, okay, he called you out. Now what? Watch how they will try to alter the thing or bring in some kind of crowd uh, uh, or in some way try to get the crowd to go with them because they're now on the spot. When you're on the spot, you have to answer for that that you'll call, um, call out on. It says, except it, be, listen to this now, guys. He said, except, now he's saying, y'all upset. What are you really upset about? He says, except it be for this one voice that I cried standing amongst them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called into question by this day. So what is Paul saying right there? What y'all are angry about, what you are mad about, what the frustration, this is the bottom of them. This right here is what it's all about right here. This is what the devil is angry about. Touching the resurrection of the dead. In essence, he is saying it's Jesus that they are mad about. What they are frustrated about is Jesus. And you will find out that people, when they get really angry, when you get to the bottom of it, that is, you will find out that it is about Jesus. What is Jesus? He is truth. They ask the question, what is truth? Jesus says, my word is truth. So when you stand on the firm of Jesus, that's what he's saying. Except it be for this one voice. Of everything that I have said, they are frustrated and mad about. They can bring you no proof. The only thing that I know that they can be this upset about, this one voice that I cried standing amongst them. Touching the resurrection of the dead. He is risen. He is risen. What Paul is saying. That's what they're angry about. That's what their frustration. That is what's got the devil riled up. Churches that is in church and they talking about playing all these little games and, and, and let's clap everybody and say everybody have fun. They, that's okay. The devil don't have a problem there. But when you preach the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the devil now has a problem. This is what bothers him. This is what gets him angry. Your church is intolerant. You people are fanatics. You crazy. You still believe this. Why is it that that has set the devil off? Because the authority and the power of God is in his word. And the word is Christ Jesus. There is only one name under heaven given amongst men whereby one can be saved. That is the name of Jesus. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And that's what the angels will say. And in time, that's what the demons will say. And man will say, Jesus Christ himself is the answer to what you're facing. And that's what they are mad about. Touching the resurrection of the dead. Y'all saying he's dead. I'm saying he's alive. What saith you? What saith you? Do you live what you say? When people look at you, do they see he have risen in your life? You were once dead, and now he has brought you back to life. Only a living God can do that. There are dead people watching you. And I'm not talking about ghosts. I'm talking about people that are dead on the inside. Their spirit is dead. Everything about them is dead, and they are watching you and the life that exudes through you and they want it. Now what are you going to tell them about? You or about the God that brought you back to life? Jesus Christ plus anything is damnation. Christ Jesus all alone is salvation. So tell them about Jesus. Father, we honor you we bless you and we thank you for this time that we have had in your word. Oh, Father, I pray that something was said that is beneficial 
to your saints, that they hold firm to that which they have learned, that they apply that which they have learned to their lives. Let us all, Lord, hold on to it tightly and apply it to our lives because the job you have given us is to be a light in an otherwise dark world. Oh, Father, my Father, be merciful to thy saints. You know what they are facing and dealing with and going through. You know what it is, Lord God, that is on their mind, on their hearts. Touch them right where they are, Father. Please touch them right where they are and deliver them out of what they're in and give them the freedom of knowing you, Lord God, have paid the tab. You, Father, will carry the burden. You, Lord, will deliver them out. And if you do this, Lord, we'll be careful to pray, give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. For this is a prayer that we will ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father. For it is both in the name of and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. Amen. Let me ask. Is there someone out there? And you have heard the word tonight. And it has touched you. And you have found yourself wanting to be a part of this team. Or you know for a fact that you have been dead Everything that points to you saying you just existing. You're not living. And God saying, I'm not coming that you may exist. I've already done that. I want you to live. That you may have life. And life more in abundance. That's what God wants for you. That's what God is asking of you. But you've been in churches or around churches or saved people. And it's dead. And tonight something was said that woke up something in you and you feel the spirit of God feel rejuvenated and energized and you want to be a part of that which God has given you tonight so you may be one that's been around churches but you've never been a part of the church meaning you never gave your life to Christ and you say tonight is the night I want to give my life to Christ Jesus that he may be the Lord thereof so if you are one that's out there and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and would like to know him as your Lord and Savior I want to walk you through God's plan of salvation but before I move let me ask are you one out there and you once knew him you had that life that was in you you knew for a fact the life that God had in you and you was living to the utmost but something died in you and you turned and walked away and now you would like to rededicate your life back to Christ. Come, walk with me with the person that never knew Jesus. Just say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this door that is open before me. I right now, by my own free will, choose to walk through this door by first repenting of the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. And I now take advantage of this opportunity by asking you, Jesus, to come into my life. Sit on the throne of my heart. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me for living my life of sin. Forgive me for walking away from your voice. I, right now, by my own free will, accept you, Jesus, as being my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you, Lord, for sitting on the throne of my heart and ruling it. I make the decision to kneel before you and serve you the rest of the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. Now, you may want to know, what do I do next? Get in a good Bible-believing church. Sit down and hear the word and grow. If you don't know of one, stay right here with us. We will continue teaching the word until you grow into a point to where you're able to get out into a church. It is important to sit in a place to where you're able to fellowship with saints and other believers. That is very important. So if you do not have a church home and you would like to be a part of a ministry that love people right where they are, um, here at Firm Foundation, we ask you two questions. One, do you believe that the Bible is the true word of God? You may say, well, yeah, I believe that. Well, the next question is, are you willing to obey the rules and the regulations of this church ministry so as long as it lines up with the word of God? He says, I'm willing to do that. Then we say, welcome to Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry, a ministry that loves people right where they are. Now, if you put that in the comment section, we will celebrate with you with that. Now, you may be in a virtual world and you say, okay, I want to come and visit you people. Follow the prompt, guys. Go to our address, 1851 Highway 66 South, 
Curtisville, North Carolina. Google it. We would like to see your face. We are a touchy, shaky, handy, huggy type of people. That's just what we do. So we would love to see you in the house of God with the people of God celebrating with us. Let's say you would say, I want to help support the ministry. How do I support the ministry financially? Well, you can go to that same website that we just told you and you can give. There's a QR code. You can give there. You can give there. And after that, guys, trust me, it will be used for the kingdom of God purposes, everything. We thank God for you. We look forward to seeing you right here on this page, right here on this channel. Um, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Sunday morning, 10 a.m. We want to see you in person, but if we can't see you in person, we definitely want to see you online that we may grow together. We love you guys. We thank God for you guys. Looking forward to seeing you again. If the Lord's will and the creek don't rise, be blessed in Jesus' name.